Hello everyone, and welcome to my The Young and the Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. April 3, 2024 Wednesday. Today on The Young and the Restless Ashley confides in a worried Tracy, Lily raises a problem with Devon, and Jordan tampers with Nikki's sobriety. Tucker wakes up next to Audra in his apartment, checking his phone. He silently exits the bed after seeing a flashback to Ashley's final visit. Later, before leaving the room, Tucker writes a letter, puts it in an envelope, and places it on Audra's nightstand at the desk. Tucker greets Lily as she comes downstairs. Considering that Devon isn't talking to him, she questions how he found out about her visit to meet Matty. Lily believes they don't have anything to say to one another. Tucker is curious about Devon's well-being. Lily informs him that she doesn't want to be involved in his constant secret agenda. Tucker claims it hurts that he has maintained his distance. He regrets missing Dom's music classes and spending time with Devon. He just has himself to blame, Lily assures him. Tucker is aware of it, but he would like to clarify. Some things, according to Lily, cannot be undone, and she will not assist him in doing so. Tucker wishes to persuade her that he is missing them. Lily states that she doesn't need to be persuaded and turns to leave. Tucker comments on the amazing timing as Devon enters, but Devon brushes him off. Jack greets Tracy, who is worried about Ashley at the Abbott house. Jack is certain that all is well. Ashley didn't come home again last night, Tracy informs him. In response, Jack says, none of our business, and it's none of his business. Jack maintains that he is honoring Tracy's boundaries, despite her irritation. Tracy stresses that there is a problem. Jack assures his sister that he will respect Ashley's right to pursue her interests. I'm done monitoring her conduct. Tracy contends that he is failing to recognize the new problem at hand. With Tucker, she's positive it's not over. If they are being honest, Jack believes that they should all stand back and consider Tucker, who isn't really capable of anything. He's unable to reach us. Tracy is not referring to the business sector. Jack believes Ashley is over him as well. It's finished. He destroyed it exactly as we had anticipated. Tracy worries that she might have stayed the night with him the previous evening. Jack feels certain that he is no longer in control of her. We need to move on from this. It's unbelievable to Tracy that all he wants her to do is watch a slow-motion train accident unfold. Jack requests that she just act as a sister to him, not as his keeper. She should not allow it be a hardship for her, but as she is the family's glue. Jack tells Tracy how much they enjoy having her there, and she starts to cry. Tracy doesn't think the family is cohesive. For Jack, it's merely a hiccup in the journey. We will support Ashley whenever she asks for and needs our assistance. I'm going to give her the space she requested till then. I'm hoping you follow suit. Tracy is searching for Ashley on the phone when she arrives at the front door looking unkempt. Where has she been? asks Tracy. Ashley sobs. I'm not sure. She tells Tracy that she didn't know how she got there when she woke up alone in a hotel room. I believe I was at the sports club. I believe that I was not inside Tucker's suite. Is she talking to him? asks Tracy. Ashley is unsure, but she believes she fled the area. If she was drinking, Tracy queries. Ashley declines, but she acknowledges that she has no certainty. Her recollection seems to be lacking something. Tracy wants to be tested because she believes she was drugged. Ashley is aware that she was not drugged. It has happened to me before, this is not the first time. When Tessa sees Nikki at society, she explains she's early for her date with Jack. They talk about her and Maria's relocation when Tessa shows her to a table. Jordan enters the bar while posing as a man in the background. Tessa and Nikki chat about the insane individual pursuing the family and the increased security at the ranch. Tessa is hoping this nightmare ends soon. She strolls back to the front door and her station. Nikki fixes her gaze on the vodka bottle that is positioned next to Jordan on the bar. Jack apologizes for being late as he shows up to meet Nikki. As Nikki tells Jordan about Maria and Tessa leaving the property, Jordan listens in. She acknowledges that something is off and says, 
Jack, I don't know what to do. She's not sure she wants to go on a vacation with Victor. Jack feels it's fantastic. Nikki is overcome with a sense of dread. I think I should drink, and going on a trip would give me some alone time with all of these horrible cravings and feelings. She can still get in touch with him, Jack assures her. This seems to be just what you need. Without Jack, Nikki is unsure if she could make it through this trauma, so she thanks him. Jordan speaks in hush to the bartender at the bar. Tucker makes another attempt to, to subdue Devon at the club and inquires about Dom. Is music still his thing? Devon gives a mum nod. He has to leave because he is late for a meeting with his sister. Tucker queries whether he truly thinks he's hopeless. They've never been a family, according to Devon. He attempts to draw lines, but he constantly crosses them. Your desires are the only thing that matter. He's by himself because he can't figure out how to quit undermining the things you say are important to you. I finished the game. You have no right to me or anyone else. When Ultra wakes up in the suite, Tucker has left. When she opens the letter she finds that last night was magical and that she is too. She notices the mail sitting on the nightstand. He was foolish to deny her what she has always known, that they were destined to be together. He's eager to return and embrace her after finishing his errands. I cherish you, Tucker. In the dining room, Devon and Lily talk about Tucker. She informs him that his father is persistent in his inquiries concerning him. Devon has reiterated to him that it is not going to occur. Lily is unsure if Devon is unaffected by this whole situation. That he hasn't been the grandfather or father he could have been is acceptable. Just because Tucker said it out loud doesn't mean he won. Devon has realized that the things you never had are impossible to miss. Tucker has never been someone he can count on, and each time he's entered his life, it hasn't been about him. He is unable to accept no, and that is not the appropriate way for a father to act. All the father he will ever need is Neil. Lily contends that simply meeting him has rattled him considerably. To change the subject, she claims that they are dealing with more pressing issues than Tucker McCall. Audra informs Tucker that his message was in the suite when he returns to her. He claims he needed to perform a crucial errand. Everything will become clear very soon. Audra chastises him for being enigmatic. Tucker prays and hopes she enjoys this little surprise. She walks out the door with him trailing behind and he opens it. With her eyes closed, Audra follows Tucker inside the jazz lounge where he has prepared a romantic dinner a la Parisienne. She gives him a kiss and tells him he's romantic. It's amazing. Ashley tears. I don't want you to have to do this for me. As Tracy fusses over her at the Abbott mansion, were you assaulted? inquires Tracy. Ashley declines, much to Tracy's relief. She inquires about her mistakes. Could you explain them? Ashley promises to be home, but all of a sudden she's across town and doesn't know how she got there. Similar to a dead zone. Something is kind of there in her memory, but it's just out of reach. This scares Tracy, so she decides to support her sister. Ashley believes that things are growing worse and worries that a terrible catastrophe will occur. They give hugs. Ashley is reassured by Tressy that she is not alone. They'll start with all they are aware of. Getting her to a doctor is the first step in ruling out any health issues. They will then need to get in touch with a mental health specialist. Every base must be covered by them. Ashley clutches her head and grimaces. I must have some water. Ashley hears a terrified voice in her thoughts as Tracy pours it out. They're going to put us away. We must take action now. Ashley's younger alter ego has taken over, and Tracy is back with her. She begs Tracy to make a pinky swear that she won't go to the doctor or inform Jack about anything. Tracy objects, but Ashley says, it's really pinky swear. Tracy pinky swears and looks perplexed, saying she won't tell Jack. Ashley suddenly stands up, declares she's going to take a bubble bath since she feels terrible. Tracy appears astounded. When the waiter at society brings Nikki a drink, he says it's on behalf of the man behind the bar. Who was it? Nikki wonders. He must have just departed, the waiter adds. What's in it? She queries. Vodka is triple distilled. 
Take that away, Nikki yells. Please take it away. After returning after his conversation with the bodyguard, Jack asks the bartender if the man at the bar is a regular. It's the first time the bartender has seen him, he says. Nikki is certain that Jordan is working with an accomplice. Am I constantly being observed wherever I go? She needs to leave because she is at her breaking point. Devon asks Lily in the club dining room what other issues she's talking about if they don't include Heather and Daniel getting fired. He's already admitted to her that he didn't like the change. Lily claims it is finalized. Devon notes that Billy won't agree with it because he always has the opposite view of anything these days. Lily claims that the ongoing conflict between him and Billy is the issue she is referring to. Devon claims Billy is to blame, but she doesn't believe that. Devon believes the argument is moot. Now that she's returned, they no longer require him at the company. Lily thinks Chancellor Winters has a spot for him. Tucker asks Audra to a toast in the jazz club and then says he has a few things to say to her. She is unaware of how much she means to him, in his opinion. She is the one he has confided in, made confessions to, and who always makes him nervous. He believes that he has never understood how much he needs and loves her until now, because his days frequently began and concluded with her. He is enamored with her intensity, richness, and deceitfulness. You're quite charming. You amaze me, Audra. Tucker claims that he feels as though he is meant to be with her just by virtue of their proximity. Despite having spent his entire life trying to avoid showing vulnerability, he is currently feeling somewhat exposed. What the hell? He exclaims as he digs into his pocket and takes out a package containing an engagement ring. Audra, marry me. I want to spend the rest of my life showing you how much I love you every day. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.